Hello, today we will continue with Math 10. I do recommend in the Math 10 series that every time you watch a question or watch me do a question, pause and try the second question on your own. And that way you get to practice and try it on your own, write your answer, and then go back, play the video, match your answer and see if you get it right. I think that's the best way that you could get the best benefit out of the videos. Um, so go ahead and watch. I think this is the 12th video. I hope you find these videos helpful. And let's go and start the next lesson. So the first thing we do in factoring is the greatest common factor. Uh, the greatest common factor is something that you have to do all the time. So even when you go into or you go further into factoring, when you're trying to factor something, always the first thing you look for is if you have a greatest common factor, but that comes later. Now here we're doing the greatest common factor. How do we do the greatest common factor? So you see the number eight and four here, which number goes into both the eight and four, four goes into both the four and eight. And then with the variables, you just choose the one that has the lower exponent, which is y squared. After you write your greatest common factor, you go to the first term here and you divide it by the greatest common factor. So eight y cubed divided by four y squared, eight divided by four is two, and y cubed divided by y squared is y. And then you have your minus sign right here and then four y squared divided by four y squared, when you divide anything by itself, it gives you one. Now let's go to second one here. I always recommend if you have a negative in, in the front, factor it out. So take out the greatest common factor and take out the negative as well. As far in the, uh, as the 28 and the 35, uh, seven, that is the greatest factor that goes into both of them. So seven, because both of the numbers divide by seven, that's the largest number that both of them divide by. And then the axis, you take the one with the lowest exponent. And then the y's, you take the one with the lower exponent, which is y squared. Now, negative divided by negative is positive. 28 divided by seven is four. X squared divided by X squared, they'll cancel. Y cubed divided by Y squared is Y minus. 35, uh, that's plus because it's a sign change because negative divided by negative is positive. 35 divided by seven is five. X cubed divided by X squared is X y squared divided by y squared cancels out. So this is your final answer for this one. So this one here. This one, if I look at the numbers three, seven, and four, there's no greatest common factor. There's no number that goes into all three numbers here. So nothing. The w squared, the w cubed, and the w, this is w to the one. So that's the only thing I could take out is w to the one. You don't have to write the one on top. 3y squared divided by w, you'll get 3 and w, divide, w squared divided by w is w, minus 7w cubed divided by w is w squared, plus 4, and w divided by w is canceled, so we'll get 1. Um, the next one here. We look at the 9, 6, and 12. Three goes into all of them. Um, the m to the four m cubed and m squared. M squared is the smallest exponent, so put m squared out. And then the n squared m cubed and m to the four n squared is the lowest exponent, so we take n squared out. Yeah. Now if I divide nine by three, I get three n to the four divided m to the 4 divided by m squared is m squared, n squared divided by n squared is 1, so we don't, uh, it cancels out, minus 6 divided by 3 is 2, m cubed divided by m squared is m, n cubed divided by n squared is n, plus 12 divided by 3 is 4, m squared divided by m squared will cancel, n to the 4 divided by n squared will be n squared. How about here? 
here the 35 and 14, I know seven is the greatest number that you could take out from here. And x squared and x to the six would be x squared because that's the lower exponent. You open brackets, 35 divided by seven is five minus 14 divided by seven is two, x to the six divided by x squared is x to the four. Sorry, I forgot to say that x squared here divided by x squared, they cancel each other out, so you don't have anything with the five. How about here? Here, the greatest common factor will be three x, and then three x squared divided by three x, you'll get x minus 12 divided by three is four, x cubed divided by x is x squared, and then plus six divided by three is two, and the x divided by x cancels out, and that's your answer. So here so far, it's we do the same thing, or the, we use the same strategy. How about here? This is definitely different from what we've been doing so far. Now for these ones, you have to look at this here as one term, and this is your second term. So if you look at the two terms here, both of them have in brackets A plus B here and there. So therefore you could take out A plus B as the greatest common factor. Now you open another brackets. If you divide this here by this, the A plus B will cancel and you'll get three X. And then you have your plus sign. And if you divide this by A plus B, the A plus P, B will cancel. And then you end up with seven left. You put that in, in the brackets. We use the same analogy here and there. So here, as you see, X plus four is in both terms. So you take it out as the greatest common factor. And now if you divide this by X plus four, you're left with X squared. Put that inside the brackets. Plus, if you divide this by X plus four, the X plus four will cancel and you're left with Y squared. That's what you write inside the brackets. How about here? Here, as you see, all these have M minus N and them. And we have three terms here. Is this term right here? This is the second term and this is the third term. How we know we have three terms because this sign and this sign here divides them into three terms. So here I could see M minus N is the greatest common factor. Now, if I take this divided by M minus N, M minus N will cancel, we're left with three X squared. Plus two X M minus N divided by M minus N, the M minus N will cancel and we're left with two X in here. And then, a lot of people, they think they don't have to write anything here because they see M minus N here and M minus N there. No, you still have to write your negative sign, minus sign, and then M minus N divided by M minus N. Yes, they cancel each other out, but they give you one because when you divide something by itself, it gives you one, and that's what you have to write here. All right, let's move on to the next one. Now here, this is the most challenging thing about the greatest common factor. And here we call this factoring by grouping. So you kind of double factor here. So you factor twice. How? What do you do with this kind of questions? You draw a line right in the middle so between the two. Here you have two terms, here you have two terms so right in the middle. You look for the greatest common factor just from this right here. And the greatest common factor just from these two terms, you could say that you could see that we could take x as the greatest common factor, and x squared divided by x will give me x plus three, and x divided by x will cancel. So that's what we have here. And then we go to this. Here I could put the plus sign, I could see, I could take out Y as the greatest common factor from these two terms. And if you take Y out, then you're gonna get X plus three inside the brackets. Now, let me just take you back to the last slide right here. So you see when we have a bracket repeating in both terms, you could take, out, take it out as the greatest common factor. And that's what I mean by double factoring. You're gonna factor again, you don't stop just here. Now this becomes exactly the same as the few questions that we did earlier. Now, if you look here, 
we have this term here and we have this term here. Both of them have x plus 3. So x plus 3 is the greatest common factor. And then I'm going to open brackets. I take this here divided by x plus 3. I get x. And I, I, I have my plus sign. And I, y brackets x plus 3 divided by x plus 3. The x plus 3 will cancel and we get y. And that's what how you factor this. This is the same thing. Draw a line right in the middle. Take out the greatest common factor from this two, and it's 5m. And 5m squared divided by 5m will give me m plus 10mn divided by 5m. 10 divided by 2. 10 divided by 5 is 2. m divided by m cancels, and we still have the n there. And then we write my minus sign. And what can we take out from here? We could take out the negative 3. Now, if you divide 3m by 3, you're going to get m and negative divided by negative will give you a plus or negative six divided by negative three gives you a plus two and you, we just carry the n right through here and that's what we have again these two terms here both of them have m plus two n so we should take out m plus two n as the greatest common factor and we end up with this five m right here and then the minus three right there How about here we do the same thing, break it in the middle. What's the greatest common factor from here? It's x squared. And we get x plus 1 because x cubed divided by x squared is x. x squared divided by x squared gives me 1. And here, there's no greatest common factor, but we could take out 1 from this. And then we're going to get x plus 1. So here, you have to take out a 1, even though usually we don't take out 1 as the greatest common factor, but in this kind of factoring by grouping, you have to do that. Then we could see that we have two terms here. This is term one, this is term two. We take out x plus one as the greatest common factor. And we're gonna get this divided by x plus one. We're gonna get x squared and then plus, and then one x plus one. When you divide them, the x plus one will cancel and you're left with one. And that's as far as it could go. Basically, this is the end of uh, factoring using the greatest common factor. Uh, we'll continue next time to factoring the difference of squares. So this is the next thing we're gonna do. As always, thanks for watching.